Well, uh, thank you very much for the invitation. I hope the uh, technology here works. We've got a couple of videos to show you as well, so it'll help your, your lunch go down. Um, start off with, I was hoping that by the time I came here today, we might have had some very good news up here in Scotland, as you're probably aware. Uh, Celtic have been leading a good fight to try to get rail seats for safe standing into Celtic Park. Um, they had a meeting of the safety advisory group on Wednesday. Uh, the hope was they might get green lights uh, to go ahead at that. Unfortunately, uh, the group still requires a bit more information, uh, so we have to wait a bit longer. But fingers crossed, uh, I think the club are quite confident they can provide that information, and perhaps by the end of the year, uh, we'll see rail seats uh, here in Scotland. But what is it then exactly that we're talking about? Now let's see if this will work. Stand in the Premier League every week, and stewards are powerless to prevent it. Fans of Hanover 96 get the stadium working at every game, standing in specially designed rail seats. Here at Hanover 96, there are <coughs> 4,000 of these rail seats in the home end. That's 3,000 fans if seated, or if they're configured like this, 5,700 standing. Now, that's great revenue for the club. The fans love it, and it massively improves the atmosphere. If there's a European or international match here, quite simply a member of staff goes along the roads with a tool like this, turns that, and they press go, it's a seat. If you know for all the supporters accept this, they like it, and we have no problems with it. Some people fear about safety here. I think there's no fear here. It's, it's much more security than on the other seats because you have uh, some, something to hold. So you don't have accidents associated with this area of the ground? In this area we have no accident, nothing. Fans and clubs alike know that standing allowed in many other sports like rugby grounds, for example, makes for a better atmosphere. Doing so in low-back seats does sometimes cause accidents and it irritates those who do want to sit because their view is blocked. That's the want the authorities to follow the Scottish example and give permission to try on rail seats. <coughs> this represents an opportunity to, to introduce a new form of standing area that is so clearly safe you can't possibly serve it forward or backwards like you used to. And at the same time, actually, it gives clubs an opportunity to make football more socially inclusive by reducing the cost of a ticket, and yet, even then, make more revenue overall. One man on the pitch during the fateful game at Hillsborough, which brought the end of traditional terracing, would love to see rail seats at the club he now manages. The supporters uh, is it the choice, uh, the option whether they want to sit or stand, and they will understand what happened 22 years ago at Hillsborough. Things have moved on tremendously uh, since then, uh, and now have a system uh, available to them uh, where they can safe stand. You know, majority of fans, it seems to be, stand anyway from their seats, uh, which we know isn't altogether safe. Uh, so, why not give them a, uh, an opportunity to stand safe? Season tickets for the standing area at Hanover sound first, such is their popularity with the fans. I've got an FD, not an FD, that's so weird. I can't take it while I got the game like pushed forward. I've already got my arm around or something. Here, let me here. It's going to be safe, isn't it? So. Everybody knows football fans stand. Uh, it's perfectly safe to do so. It's going to improve the atmosphere. Everybody that wants to see it can be seated in the rows of the stadium. Fans want to stand and can stand. Every single club uh, has seen the demonstration we have in the UK with these rail seats. Uh, all indeed have been out to do these for themselves. That's what I'm to have done. Uh, have all been positive. The, the range of interest uh, varies from we think it's a great idea and it should be support further, to on the other end, we buy several thousand tomorrow if we could, but we can't. Hanover's players at an open training session, surrounded by fans with whom they say they have a special bond, who are made all the stronger because they can get the crowd up on their feet. So, uh, that's a bit of a background shows you exactly what safe standing is all about. Uh, perhaps I'll tell you a bit about me before I move on. Um, I'm a Bristol City fan. I'm a board member of the Sports Trust at Bristol City. Um, I'm therefore a customer of a rich man's toy. Um, closer to my heart, in the last couple of years, I've become a member of Esther Esther Union Berlin, 
which means me and 12,000 other members are that club, and we are not the customers of a rich man's toy. Um, but on the same Stanley front, I've been running around the country, and indeed abroad, uh, fighting a good fight for the last few years, from the deepest southwest of England, up to the northeast of Scotland, and all points in between, including some grounds that some fans might call paradise. Some of our opponents suggest that if we had standing again in football, as if standing had ever actually gone away, um, we'd turn the clock backwards in the sort of family-friendly uh, feel that football is, is proud of having today uh, would go. Because they say women don't like standing, which frighten women away. <laughs> they say we frighten kids away. Kids don't like standing. But then you look at actually what they do uh, abroad, that's a kids-only standing area at Fairfield Hospital in Germany. But what do we have at the moment? We have people standing in areas not designed for the purpose, often in their tens of thousands. And as you can see there, uh, looking down the legs of the people in the front row, absolutely nothing in front of them to stop them falling forward. And we do know that when people get overexcited, when a team has just scored the last minute winner, I'm sure you've all seen it, uh, New Zealand fans falling into the row in front. What we're suggesting is that if they had a rail in front of them, they couldn't fall into the row in front. So let's have a look at the situation up here in Scotland, which is actually quite a bit different to the situation that uh, I experienced down in England and in Wales. Since you restructured your league last summer, there is no longer any requirement for any ground in Scotland to have any seats whatsoever. Uh, the clubs in the top two divisions have to have an SFA <coughs> uh, license. As it says there, there may be seats and standing. The only requirement is that 500 of the fans have to have a roof over their head. So some of your grounds in second tier, third tier, that have terraces, if they were to get promoted to the top flight, they can carry on using those terraces in theory. However, if they had aspirations to play in Europe, they couldn't, because the European rules say uh, their grounds have to be all seated for Champions League matches and uh, European League matches, which is why clubs like Wolfsburg, uh, Borussia Dortmund, after FC Nuremberg and Hanover 96 all have uh, rail seats in their grounds. The problem for the Germans came about 14 years ago, 15 years ago, when UEFA made this rule. Until then, most German grounds like this is uh, Borussia Mönchengladbach's old ground was in use until 2004, as you can see, near your terracing. And because their clubs are genuine members' clubs, and members' clubs do what their members want, and their members like to stand, they have always had standing, they will always have standing. So when UEFA brought in this rule, they had to find a way uh, to be able to provide that standing for <laughs> domestic Bundesliga games on a Saturday afternoon and then quickly convert the ground to an all-seater configuration if they were playing in a European game in midweek. And they actually came up with three or four different solutions, but one of them uh, was rail seats. And now more and more grounds are putting in rail seats. This is a recent expansion at Bertha Brayman's ground. Uh, in the 18 clubs that were in the Bundesliga top flight last season, uh, half of them had rail seats in at least part of the ground. So going back to this country, um, safety advisory group at Celtic, weren't quite certain this week that it was a good thing, but as we've seen, at the moment we have fans standing up with no means of supporting themselves. If we had rail seats, the uh, safety advisory group, they could not fall forward. At the moment, the uh, safety guidelines in the UK generally uh, allow quite narrow rows with, with the space left by the seat uh, being as narrow as 305 millimeters. If you have rail seats, because the seat folds up flush between the uprights, the space there is really, really wide, which also means that when you're standing up, you don't have to stand shoulder to shoulder. One of the things that uh, safety uh, experts get worried about is if you stand up, you're wider than when you sit down. When you sit down, you're like this, uh, but when you stand up, you're wider. And if you're standing shoulder to shoulder, the person on the end will go out into the row. And they don't like that, but because uh, with rail seats, you've got that bit of space, you can stand slightly forward, slightly back, so you don't go out into the row. You can also uh, curtail encroachment into the stairways with end rails like that. So again, there's no reason really um, for safety advisory people to worry about any encroachment uh, into the stairways. You can also, if you wish, with rail seats, make sure that there can be no standing on the seats. 
at the moment. Okay, plastic ones wobble a bit, so that, that in itself um, uh, discourages standing on the seats, but metal seats are very rigid, and if they are down and available, fans could stand on them. But they have locks, and if the clubs wish to do so, and the rules allowed it, they can be locked out of use, and the German clubs, when they're using their rail seat areas for standing purposes, the seats are locked out of use, and they only unlock them on those other occasions when they play in Europe. One big benefit for clubs, rail seats do not break. I'm sure that uh, picture down bottom left there you probably all recognise, uh, that was reported as £10,000 worth of damage in one 90 minute period. The pile of uh, seats the other side of the picture there uh, are rail seats waiting to go into Hanover 96's ground in 2005. They put in 3,000 in their home end, 1,000 in their away end. So 4,000 seats went in in 2005. We're now in 2014, they've not had one breakage in that time. And you, you ask me your clubs how many uh, seats they have to replace every season, you know, it soon adds up. So that, that's, a, that's a real benefit. Back to the safety aspect though, surging. We've all seen players slide on the ground in front of fans like that when they score a sensational goal and the fans tumble forward. Pitching encroachment is made less easy. If the fan in the fifth row is inclined to try to run onto the pitch. If that fan's got to uh, negotiate four or five rows of rail seats, they're not going to find it very easy. So they can stop doing that as well. Friction. We want to know one of the, one of the greatest uh, causes of friction in our football grounds today are stewards uh, asking fans to sit down and fans uh, deciding they don't want to. And there can be some very nasty incidents. If those fans who want to sit down have their own designated area, and everybody else who wants to sit has their designated area and there's no call on the stewards to try and make fans sit down, we totally eliminate uh, those sort of ugly scenes. In terms of uh, apprehending miscreants, if anybody misbehaves, if it's uh, in a, a seated area, a normal seated area, they can quite easily hop over the seat backs, forwards or backwards, and evade a steward or a police officer. Uh, if you have an area like that and you put one steward at one end of the row and another one on the other end, it's a lot more difficult for any naughty fan to get out of the way. Most importantly though, the biggest benefit of having safe standing areas with rail seats is that it allows all of us as fans a choice that we ought to be allowed. If we wish to stand, we should be allowed to stand. Whether we're a middle-aged man like me, uh, cheerful ladies like that, kids in the corner there, wherever it might be. If they want to stand, we should be allowed to in the designated area and all those uh, who want to sit should then know they can go to the game and they'll be sitting amongst like-minded souls and won't find somebody standing up in front of them blocking their view. So that's the benefits. Now, if you were inclined to go back to your clubs and say, we ought to be doing this, uh, the question might cross your mind, what would be involved? How would we actually go about installing rail seats uh, onto one of our existing viewing decks? So this next video, which hopefully will work, will show you how that can, how that can be done.
Each of the Furco rail seats are individually constructed with their own integrated handrail. The installation commences with careful measurements to ensure the correct height and spacing. In this case, 500 mm centers. For future installations, 460 mm centers will be available as well. Once this is completed, the first holes are drilled into the concrete step and the fitting begins. Using heavy duty reinforced drill bits to cope with any internal concrete reinforcements, the holes are then aligned with the rail seat and secured using M10 95mm through bolts. The bolts have a hot dipped galvanized finish to match the rail seats and to better withstand the weather. Based on the quality and geometry of the concrete, Furco's engineers will choose the appropriate anchor and fixing combinations to ensure that they achieve a stable result over the long term. The installation at Ashton Gate incorporates three different heights of handrail. One of 1,100 millimeters, one of 950 millimeters, and one of 800 millimeters. The reason for this is to promote debate and discussion on the best and most appropriate height for the rails in British Stadia going forward. 1,100 millimeters is the required height on current conventional terraces that are designed to hold back up to eight rows of standing supporters while 800 millimeters is the current requirement for a parapet rail at the front of a grandstand upper tier. With no need to hold back eight rows of fans or to arrest the forward momentum of a supporter stumbling down a stairway head on into the rail, 1,100 millimeters is perhaps unnecessarily high for rail seats. Would 800 millimeters be better or perhaps somewhere in between? The demonstration block at Ashton Gate in Bristol is designed to help safety experts decide. Each rail seat when down takes up the same lateral space as a standard seat, and when locked upright to accommodate standing fans, fits flush between the 50mm uprights. The rails are designed to withstand a horizontal loading of 2 kN per meter, which is way in excess of the Green Guide specifications. Once the actual drilling and individual rail seat placement has been completed, final checks are performed and the securing bolts tightened. And there we have it, the first ever block of rail seats in the UK, fitted by Furco's three-man team in just a few hours. Rail seats, they're robust, Versatile and as we've seen, easy to install. Now, what time's kick off? So, I hope you made a note what size bolt you need. That's the nuts and bolts part of uh, how to install them. The big question, obviously, or lots of clubs come up with, is what about the cost? Now, for big Premier League clubs down in England, your bigger clubs up here in Scotland, um, it's an investment I'm sure they can recover and one that's very worthwhile. For some of the smaller clubs, uh, it might be considered very expensive and perhaps it's somewhere where the fans themselves can help. It's very hard to give a, a precise uh, idea of what the cost might be, but that's a very rough ballpark. If you're looking at an area, an area of, say, 500 seats, you might be looking at a ballpark gross cost of 50,000. You'd have 500 existing seats spare, which can go into reserve to replace those broken seats in other parts of the ground going forward, so you'd have a, a net 10,000 10, saving on that. So it might be £40,000 roughly that a 500 uh, seat block might cost. And for a club uh, investing that sort of money, the return on investment for them is lifetime loyalty from fans. We're very good, or clubs are very good at getting kids in on kid a quid, but they're not so good at holding on to the uh, fans when they reach 17, 18, 19 and have to pay for themselves and find that the uh, offering being made to them is a lot of boring one sat down. They can get, as I say, sort of the young fans then hooked in to stay, they can do membership schemes, they can do long-term season tickets. There are benefits for the clubs. For trusts, there are also benefits. Uh, if your trust runs your own club, you could use it as a fundraising exercise. Sometimes I think fans, when they're asked to raise money for a very tangible uh, target, are perhaps more inclined to chip in than when they're asked to raise money for a very vague idea of, of buying shares in the club. Um, FC United of Manchester recently raised £50,000 in eight weeks asking uh, for funds to uh, cover the cost of some extra fixtures and fittings for their new ground. That was done through fundraising. They're a small club, 
They only have average attendances under 2,000 fans. 2,000 fans. Another opportunity might be doing a similar thing to what we are doing at Ashton Gate with our Bristol City Supporters Trust. We're raising money for a statue for one of our former players outside the ground. Uh, we're going to raise 60, 70,000 pounds. We have an arrangement with the club where, when we've got the money, we will uh, get the statue made, hand the money to them. They will pay the guy who does the statue, and they will give us shares in return. So it's a way, perhaps, of getting something for your club that your fans want but for yourselves as a trust, also getting uh, some shares in return. So those are some possible ways that you could fund it. I hope what you've seen in terms of the slides and the, uh, the videos gives you a better idea of actually what safe standing and rail suits are all about. I have put on the end here any questions. I suspect we're probably a bit tight for time. Uh, I'm, I'm told we're, we're okay. So if you have any questions, please ask, and I will do my best to answer them. Right, um, probably less awkward than the last one I asked. Um, a couple of observations on the safety aspect. One, um, I was at a, um, in the away section at Sunderland during the pre-match warm-up when one of the uh, shots of goal missed, hit a seat, broke the seat off and threw it two rows back. If there'd been anybody behind it, they would probably have been badly injured. Um, and the other one, in January, coming back from the match on the train, was chatting to a guy just taking his three-year-old son to his fourth game. The second match he took him to, Everton scored, person behind hit the back of the seat, kid projected uh, into the air, thankfully had the wherewithal to stick his arms around dad's neck or couldn't snow what would have happened. But those seats look as though, in many cases, they're, they're lip free at the back. So they, are, they are completely lip free at the back, so that, that age old problem of fans scraping their shins is totally eliminated. Yeah. But it also comes back, both of those uh, situations come back to the the benefit of having designated areas of the ground for different sorts of fans. Yeah. Family enclosures, areas where everyone sits, areas where those who want to stand stand. Now, the other thing, genuine question, um, there's been a lot of stuff in the press recently about you know, standing over the offices being healthier for people. Yeah, um, it's one of the things I enjoy. We get, you know, a lot of time we go to the way and you know, it's not standing over, you just stand anyway. It's all the stewards. Um, what, you know, has anybody done any research on that in terms of making, you know, making the case? As well. It's not an argument with you, but yes, that's certainly in the middle of winter, I'm sure standing is far better for blood circulation than sitting down in a freezing cold stadium. So yeah, we might add that one to our list of arguments in favour of safe standing. So can I just ask one question? Um, you mentioned earlier on about um, the number of people that attend increased from I think it was 3,000 to 5,000. How is that going to work? Because I'm assuming one person that stands on the same location as they sit. So how? how how are you getting, and how are you fitting more people in to that designated space area? I think that was a reference in the video, wasn't it? Yeah. What, that's what they do in Germany. It is not what we have to do in this country. And certainly those clubs who are showing the greatest interest at this stage are talking about one standing fan per seat space. I mean, because, as you can see here, you have a lot of space there. In theory, you can accommodate more than one per seat space. But I think because there is you know, that, that resistance out there to the whole idea of standing, you know, we don't want at this stage to suggest we're going to try and cram more fans in. It's one standing fan per seat space. Um, do that for a few years. If that's all very happy and satisfactory, and there's a desire amongst the clubs to look at other configurations, then perhaps do so then. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. If you've got any more questions, I'll be outside later, so just come and grab me. Thank you very much, John.